Uh, I think we have to go backwards to answer that question. Um, when I first met Elise, gosh, she was really young, and uh, and uh, and long story short, we, we kind of kept in touch. I always knew she would be a star. It was just a matter of time, and she ended up getting a record deal in the U.S. Um, and uh, you know, not every record deal works out, and she ended up back in Canada. And I was a judge on like an American Idol type type contest, and. Elise sent me an email out of the blue and said, can I enter? And I said, absolutely, you know, we love talent and we won the contest. And Elise entered and it didn't take long for me to know she was going to win. And uh, I knew actually on the first day that she was probably going to win. And she won and then we teamed up and into her first record, her first song, Insatiable. Um, and I signed her and she was, she was very young at the time. And we did this song called Insatiable. And um, being a, a guy who makes music for North America, all of the labels were telling us, no, you, you'll never be able to break an Asian pop star in North America. It's not going to happen. And we didn't believe them. So we decided to uh, defy what the labels were saying. And uh, we put out Insatiable. And it went number one, which is, they were wrong. <laughs> so we felt really good about that. And within weeks, all of a sudden, Elise, Elise was doing uh, sell-out stadiums with Rihanna, and it literally happened overnight. And it, it became very clear very fast that North America needed an Asian pop star. They needed a role model, and you know, for me, I just felt proud to be a part of that because Elise was the very first Asian pop star in my country, and that felt really good. And I remember early on going to a mall with a radio station and um, there was 8,000 people. This is like just weeks into her career and there were 8,000 people lined up outside of the mall around the corner. They waited for probably eight, nine hours to get her autograph. And it was so evident, you know, in, in my country we have, we're very multicultural. We have a lot of people from a lot of different cultures and you know, growing up in the music business, I watched I watched when there were no Latino stars. And then all of a sudden, J-Lo and Shakira, and now it's a common thing. Um, and to be a part of Elise, to be the very first to open the doors for Bruno Mars and all these other amazing, talented people, it just felt really good. So we never, you know, we're, we're with Universal in North America, we never felt like Universal would do the job properly for us here in the Philippines. And Elise was born in Manila. She's she's Filipino 100%. And so we wanted a partner that knew, that, that we felt good about, and we would trust, and, and and knew would direct us and guide us for this market. Because you only have one chance at a first impression. So we wanted to do it right here. And so the only person that that we would ever even agree to work with was Boss Vic. So we met Boss Vic. He came to Canada. We had dinner. And that night we knew, okay, now we're ready to launch in the Philippines properly. And working with Viva and MG and the whole team over here and, and, and Punch, and this is home to us. So, so everything's unfolding, like literally as I sit here in front of the cameras, everything's unfolding exactly how it's supposed to. And so we feel really good and really proud and, and, and just happy to be here in the Philippines. Like, this is such an amazing emerging market. Walking through the malls and seeing CD stores, like, there's no better place in the world for music than this country right here. You know, that, everywhere you go, you watch, you watch the shows on ABS-CBN, primetime TV, it's singing and dancing. What other country has that? We don't have it in our country. The U.S. doesn't have it in their country. It's here. And so, for us, you know, this is the place we want to be. So we're, we're really excited to, to, you know, roll out a lease here with Viva.